Okay, good morning, folks, and welcome to Swing Trading Today. This is Bob Desmond, and it is Friday, August the 10th, 6.33 in the a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's begin with the NASDAQ composite four-hour chart, pre-market activity, and we are down sharply in the pre-market. Now, we have struggled over the past several days. You may be saying, you know, struggle. It's been doing pretty good. Well, in terms of struggling, what I mean is that we have been unable to take out the highs of the 25th of July. And now we are breaking down below key support or have broken down below key support, whether it be this diagonal lower band of the rising uptrend channel, or if you want to use as your support measure, this support level here at 7,442 on the NASDAQ. Now, before I get off into the charts of the S&P 500 gold, the dollar, etc., let's talk first about the agenda for today. A little bit of chatter about the economic data that was released yesterday and what is expected to be released this morning. Then we're going to go over the pre-market activity, then segue into members stock chart request and some watch stocks then members we're going to go over and do a morning update you need to be a member to go over our strategy for the morning we'll be discussing our positions that we're looking to add to take off one of those positions being awx which we bought when nobody else wanted it and it is skyrocketing over night and into this morning so we are up sharply on AWX, and it looks like it wants to press higher. So members more to come here, and if you're not currently a member, take advantage. Risk-free, 14-day free trial offer. Click a button to cancel. And if you're not ready to go that route yet, that's fine. Get to know me. Click the subscribe button if you watch this on YouTube. Share it with a friend. Leave a comment if you watch this on the website. Enter your email address, we at spam 2 Let's get to the charts of the S&P 500. So the S&P 500, similar to the NASDAQ, however, unlike the NASDAQ, where the NASDAQ has been trying to take out the highs of the 25th of July, the S&P 500 has been trying to take out the highs of January at 2878.5, last seen on the 26th of January of this year. Now, the problem short term for the S&P 500 is that we've been respecting the lower band of support. We've shown strength on sell-offs, holding the support level here at 2791, bouncing back, continuing higher until, of course, we got here on the 8th of August and we began to weaken up and we broke down below the lower band of support. We have limped back. I've warned men, members about this all the time. Many times you get a breakdown below support. You get a limp back and an attempt to recover. And then a failure, a rollover, and a breakdown. Now what we're seeing after this limp back is a lower high. So take your crayon out. Draw a new resistance level. And now we are breaking down below key support. So this is a problem. In the short term, anyway, at current, we have the S&P in the pre-market down around 12 and a quarter points. And you can see here, we are down below support after putting in a double top. But this is a four-hour chart, right? So we could bounce back. It's very short term, very volatile. By no stretch of the imagination, you go dumping shares out of your 401k mutual funds. However, what we'll be going over with members on the weekend commentary is a look and how the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, multiple sectors are setting up, not on just a daily view, but on a weekly view as we discuss strategy over the weekend. That'll be on the week ahead commentary, so members, stay tuned. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. All right, so here again, what we're seeing is a bit of weakness. We were able to put in a higher high from... The peak of the 27th of July to the 7th of August. But now we are weakening up and putting in lower highs and now lower lows. I wouldn't go fretting all too much until we start breaking down below 
these more significant support levels here. I mean, don't get me wrong. The fact that we closed down below this, let's pull back here. This significant lower band of the rising uptrend channel is important. But where I would really start to get nervous is if we started taking out this low here. This is a far more significant break in the market. We'll use purple today as our lines in the sand for this market. So, long story short, uh, we did press on to make a new month-over-month -month high in August. We do not have a new yearly high, and this rally is now under some pressure down 96 points in the pre-market, a little over a third of a percentage point. Let's take a look at the proximate cause of what I believe is pressuring the market, the dollar. And what's influencing the dollar? The trade wars. Okay? So you're seeing weakness in the one. That's the Chinese weapon of choice to fight us in the trade war. The, the, <clears throat> the Chinese stock market has suffered of late due to the trade wars. The U.S. stock market has been resilient. The question is, how long will that last uh, at what point do we say, okay, you know, U.S. manufacturers have a problem here. Now, the ironic part is that since we make very few goods here now in the United States, which is a very sad statement, very ironic, very sad, uh, the trade imbalance with manufactured goods with China is just so far in their favor. And on the headline, it would appear that absent agricultural products, that the Chinese are far more vulnerable to the trade war. And to this point, that has been true. So the dollar is pressing higher. So this is approaching what I like to call a geopolitical event. Meaning, the damage that can be done to not just the U.S. economy, not just to the Chinese economy, but to the global economy is significant. Therefore, we are entering a geopolitical event realm. Now... Why am I talking about that now? It's because I have been watching with great interest gold. And while we have made new yearly highs this week on the price of the dollar, gold has not broken down. In fact, we rallied yesterday. We did put in a bearish key reversal. And for all I know, we may break down to new lower lows here, but I think that we're quite close to a bottom on gold. We have been buying this week. We've been buying the gold miners, I should say, not gold. And we are now in a trading range. Uh, does this support level hold here? I don't know. But we are off the lows of the session as the dollar comes off the highs. Now, why am I talking about gold and the dollar as if they could trade in tandem? It's because they can. When? Only during times of great geopolitical stress. And traders perceive the U.S. dollar and gold as a safe haven. Much as what you saw back in 2015 during the Brexit vote. Go back to a chart, June 2015, overlay the dollar versus gold. You'll see that they were rallying together. Why? One word, fear. We should also note on this chart that gold has broken out. You wouldn't believe it, but it has right here. On this four-hour chart, we broke out on the 8th, pulled back, did a retest. We're now pulling back yet again to retest the support level. Let's see whether or not it holds. If the dollar fades or if we have a headline news come across that is damaging to the markets and is as a result of the trade wars, you could expect the two to rally together. Now, keep in mind that at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we get the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. That's the measure of inflation at the consumer level. Yesterday, we had the PPI, that's the Producer Price Index. That's the level of inflation at the producer level. And it came in at half of what was expected, which allowed for gold to rally. Now, that may seem counterintuitive. Doesn't gold do better during times of inflation? Yes. When the Federal Reserve is behind the curve in terms of real interest rates and you have rising inflation 
and a lagging economy, yes, gold rallies. But when you have a miss on uh, PPI and perhaps today on CPI, if you get a miss, it takes the pressure off the Federal Reserve to have to raise rates aggressively. And the thought process there is that allows gold to rally. Let's take a look at the bond market this morning. The 10-year Treasury note is just simply ripping through the ceiling. That means that yields are declining. Now, we have to go back to our GDP numbers of only a few days ago where we had Q2 GDP come out with a 4.1 read. My commentary on that report is that we pulled growth forward and that we probably would not repeat it. And I think that the bond market is now validating that opinion with the 10-year yield pulling back as the 10-year bond rallies. Let's watch out for that CPI number at 830 this morning, Eastern Standard Time. Okay, let's kick our uh, watch stocks and our member stock chart request off with, uh, first off, tomorrow being Saturday, that is when I send out best stock charts for the next trading week. If you want that video analysis sent to your inbox, simply enter your email address on the website, anywhere. And of course, you, you should get harassed into entering your email address if you're trying to leave the website by a pop-up box you can enter your email address there trust me you'll not be spammed and you will get best stock charts for the coming week all right let's get to it shoe s-h-o-o steve madden i've spoken about this one several times in the past we bought it earlier in the week we booked profits yesterday why it's because the market started to weaken up and Steve Madden was not holding its gains. It started to sell off. So what I read into that is that you had some profit takers above, and I was going to be one of them. Because if the market weakens up, as it's doing this morning, in all probability, you're going to get a chart that looks like new skin, which I'm going to go over in a moment, where we had a topping tail, and we pull back. And we'll look to buy back in on that pullback. But right now... I'm not in love with Steve Madden. I love the breakout. I love the retest. I'm not loving yesterday's price action. It's a bit of a concern. Volume could have been better. The other indicators still look good. I like Steve Madden for the long term. So it remains a watch. Member stock chart request Alibaba. All right, so weekly chart here. There's not much to talk about except for one thing. Stay away or... Actually, two, shorted on a new weekly low because Alibaba is probably going considerably lower. Now, here's the fly in the ointment. In all probability, the price action on Alibaba is due to the trade wars. So if you get a headline report that comes across that there's going to be some resolution to these trade wars, if you're short, you're going to have your head ripped off. So I would stay small with that short. But we have flashed a lower high, prior high 211.70, new lower high 198.35. We had broken out above this upper band of a bull flag formation. That's what this formation is here, a strong continuation breakout back here during the week of May the 7th. Rallied, that rally has failed. And we are now trading back down to within this trading range. So what normally happens when you get a breakout point failure or a bull trap, whatever you want to call it, call it cupcakes. It doesn't matter. This is a failure. Failed breakouts normally lead to, at a bare minimum, a retest of the lower band of that trading range. And it's quite possible that we break that lower band of support if the proximate cause of the sell-off Let's say it's the trade wars are not resolved. The technicals on Alibaba are very bad right now, and they continue to weaken with both lines on Stokes, clearly down below the 50 level and declining further on big, big down volume, folks. This is not mom and pop selling 100 shares. These institutions do not fight them. So be careful here. It doesn't mean that we can't have a counter trend rally on Alibaba, and I still love the company, but right now, there are, there are bigger forces at play influencing the shares. You need to stay away or look to the short side. Amazon. Tell us two stories, right? You have Alibaba 
declining in Amazon at new all-time highs. And I, I spoke about Amazon a couple of uh, days ago, a few days ago, and I said that we're going to $2,000 per share. I still think that we are. Why? It's because traders are OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. They see that big round number, they want to touch it. So it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Should it be at $2,000 per share? Who knows? So despite how childish it is to use as your game plan or your rationale for being long of Amazon, the fact that it's going to touch $2,000 per share, however childish it may be, it's probably accurate. You have stokes which are rising. Volume is rising sequentially. Yesterday was above average volume. I will say this, is that we did sell off the highs of the day yesterday. So you did see some profit taking. So it may not be a straight shot to the 2000 mark. But I think before we break the bull trend that we're seeing right now, we will touch that $2,000 mark. Come hella high water. GOS, Canada Goose Holdings, we booked profits on GOS a while ago back here. And thank goodness that we did. We have a double top. And now we have a confirmation breakdown. This is a broken stock, folks. So if you're thinking that you're going to buy the dip here, I would caution against it. Why? It's because, as I mentioned, we have a double top. Prior high, 68.75. New lower high, 64.95. The pullback off of the all-time high was to 56.58. We have now closed down below that level and did so significantly. In all probability, what's going to happen here is that we're going to come back down here and fill this gap, which opened up here on the 15th of June. We'll revisit it at that level or on a retest of $42 per share. Until that point in time, I would avoid. We have big volume bars here, folks. Again, institutional distribution. Do not fight these guys. This is not mom and pop selling 100 shares. Let the shares settle out where they will. Then we'll revisit. New skin. All right, so these shares popped higher. Opening up a gap on the 3rd of August. We have pulled back off the highs. We retested support at $81 per share. What I want to do here is draw our line in the sand for as to where we would want to see the shares trade, were we to buy the shares aggressively. And it's as simple as a dotted blue line. And there you have it. Okay, We want to see the shares trade either at the lower band of support here, retesting the $81 per share level to scratch the itch, open up a small position. Then we want to add more aggressively on a close outside and above this upper band of resistance if the market holds up here i think it's quite possible that we get a break out here on new skin down volume was light yesterday that's a good sign so new skin we remain bullish on until of course the shares break if they break support and close down below 81 dollars per share we go neutral netflix daily chart uh, I was hoping after earnings back here that we would get a rally up to 400 to 410 per share. I believe that was my target. We never got it. All we've seen is weakness. And the reason why I wanted it to rally up to that uh, 410 level was to short it, to short it to strength. We haven't had the opportunity. It's just remained weak. It looks weak. We have broken out of the upper band of this downtrend channel. Might we rally? Sure. But if the NASDAQ weakens up here further, we'll be looking to open up a short position on Netflix. Best Buy. We broke out on a weekly chart. It appears as though we may close above this upper band of resistance. This is what we've been watching for. Our daily chart. Daily chart is pressing higher. We are kissing the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. Expect a pullback here. I like Best Buy. We'll be looking to open up a position on Best Buy perhaps as soon as today or perhaps early next week okay members let's segue over into a brief morning update we'll discuss the higher level view of the markets a strategy and what we're going to do with our current positions let's get to it 
Okay, folks, so let's begin with the U.S. dollar. We have been watching the U.S. dollar with great interest. The strength in the U.S. dollar is being caused primarily due to uh, a safe haven, a flight to safety. You're seeing the same with a rush into our bonds, which is pushing interest rates lower. Now, the last time we spoke about the RSI on the dollar bull ETF, we had a bearish divergence going on. That bearish divergence has now been broken.